Welcome back guys from Tampa Bay. This morning I'm going to take a short ride out here and talk about something that's a pretty much only Florida phenomenon and pretty much only in the central parts of Florida. And that's talking about sinkholes. You might have heard the term and certainly other parts of the country will very occasionally experience them but nothing like around here. And it's a pretty recent phenomenon. Some people will argue that they don't know why, and some people like me have no doubt in our minds as to why. Let me explain. Sinkholes are exactly what they sound like, huge holes that open up in the ground pretty much randomly. There is no way to really predict when or where they're going to open up yet. And they can be absolutely huge. They can be dozens of feet deep. They can be dozens to 100 feet in diameter. And whatever is underneath them goes away. Roads, buildings, parts of buildings, people, Vehicles, you know, they don't discriminate. <laughs> and it happens pretty frequently here over the last 10 years or so. And it's actually been increasing. Now I'm here in a city called Holiday. We're right near the coast. It's not that common as it is more inland. From Tampa inland towards Lakeland and Orlando, it gets a lot more common. And that kind of leads up as to why some of us think it's happening. And that's due to farming. Now the whole phenomenon is happening because holiday, or not holiday, Florida, is basically a huge slab of limestone, which is very porous and pretty flat, pretty shallow. It's an ancient seabed. That's why we have no terrain here. <laughs> None to speak of at least. The entire state is just a giant peninsula of limestone. And as a result, you know, we don't have bedrock, we don't have any mountain ranges, we don't have anything deep. We have very, very shallow water table. The entire state water table is only a few feet underground. That's why we don't have a lot of underground utilities or, uh, you know, Florida doesn't have any basements. If that gives you a clue, a lot of people don't realize that. It's kind of one thing I miss from uh, living up north. And up north, in this case, means pretty much Georgia and above. <laughs> you know, basements are normal when you're on bedrock. But not down here. You know, the water table is just too shallow. So that makes it pretty fragile. Now, we've got these water tables, and they're fed by huge underground natural aquifers. And, you know, they, they feed the entire state's ecosystem, like the Everglades. Well, what has been allowed to happen fairly recently is all the farmers during the winter months, especially strawberry farmers and to some extent citrus farmers, are allowed to pump from the natural underground aquifers via wells in unlimited quantities. Now you might ask yourself, how much water could they possibly go through? And if you're talking about watering crops, not much. That's not the issue. In the winter months, Florida will very occasionally have cold snaps where we go below freezing. And of course, anything below freezing kills crops. What happens is the farmers will start irrigating the entire crops constantly during cold snaps. That means for days on end, usually all night, for days on end, they will be pumping water nonstop. And it doesn't just seep back down into the ground, it runs off and it eventually goes out into the ocean. So the aquifers are pumped almost dry very quickly. You know, they're not that huge. If you're talking about normal use, they're plenty large. But when you're talking about unlimited pumping by agriculture for days on end they drop by feet and as a result 
it leaves huge cavities all throughout the water table and the natural aquifers throughout the limestone. And then what do you get? You get those cavities collapsing, aka sinkholes. They do absolutely massive damage. There have been people killed. Just recently there was a guy that they couldn't even recover. He was buried under dozens of feet of rock and building debris and you know whatever is left of him was squished beyond belief. But you can't even get into them. They're too dangerous because all the ground right around them is completely unstable. So it's just too difficult. You have to fill it in with concrete basically and sturdy it up and then hope more stuff doesn't collapse. We had one directly across the street from us. The house across the street that's just getting renovated right now. Uh, they had one and they caught it early. I guess you know you can tell if it's under your house you'll start to see cracks or doors not quite aligning. You, sometimes you get some warning like that and there are a lot of companies around here that try to mitigate it. And what they do is they bring in special drills and they drill down these huge basically like pylons all around the house at an angle and then they pump concrete down to try to shore it up and they try to hit whatever void is down there and stop more damage from being done so you don't lose your house. Now it costs obviously many thousands of dollars to have that done. However, sometimes you just don't have a choice. And if you're unfortunate enough to live in an area, to live on a parcel that has required sinkhole insurance, your insurance can go up by tens of thousands of dollars every year, overnight. And there have been a lot of people around here that have had to walk away from their homes because they simply couldn't afford that hit, especially if they got hit by increasing flood insurance, which they've just started rezoning around here. They started inland, and next year they're supposed to hit these coastal areas. And if you're all of a sudden in a parcel that needs flood insurance, the same thing can happen. It's just, you know, it's a huge, huge difference. To give you an example, our homeowner's insurance is only 700 and some dollars a year. So normal insurance is not only very cheap for the rest of the country, but a very low amount. And when all of a sudden that goes up to $20,000, most people are not going to be equipped, I'm certainly not, to take that kind of hit. And at that point, you're like, you know what? Here you go, bank. You can have the house. It's not worth it. So what are you going to do? But with sinkholes, I think it can be very, very prevented. Personally, I don't give a rat's ass about the strawberry fields. I don't give a rat's ass about citrus. I understand it's big business for Florida, but the damage is not worth it. Not even close. We have sinkholes opening up dozens every year. And I'm always wondering what it's going to take for the government to finally say enough is enough. What's it going to take? Uh, a hole opening up underneath an elementary school and taking out a few dozen kids? Maybe that would do it. I don't know. It's been close. We did have a couple schools affected, but they were closed. They opened up on weekends. So, eh, not really anything happened. We've had a lot of vehicles lost. There have been people that have just been driving down the road just like this, and all of a sudden, bam, the road just is gone, and their car is 20 feet down underground. There was a guy in uh, Tampa where it happened last year and the whole corner of his house just opened up and he was sleeping and he was completely gone. They never recovered the body and of course his brother was distraught that was in the next room and you know they, they heard him screaming. They couldn't even see him. Sometimes these holes are 50 feet deep, 100 feet wide. So it's really a huge phenomenon. There was one that opened up in a swamp and it was just absolutely astounding to see trees completely disappear. Water just, I mean, the, the whole area drained into the sinkhole. It was just absolutely huge. Oh, what's this? A sinkhole. Yep, one opened up overnight right around the block here. So we're going to take a look, show you what I'm talking about. I'm doing a voiceover for this part because I completely forgot to turn on the external mic when I pulled it off the helmet. Lesson learned. If I have my Bluetooth receiver on it, I need to do that.
So here we see the sinkhole. You can see how thin the road surface is. I've got the GoPro on narrow here, so this is as zoomed in as I can get. And I didn't know how it was going to look ahead of time. It would have been a pain in the ass to get out the phone and use the remote viewfinder and all that kind of stuff. But I figured it would be pretty close. You can see that it spans the entire roadway and actually goes underneath the curb on both sides. Then you have the very thin base layer under the road, and then it's pretty much sand. You can see how shallow the the earth is around here. I can dig down six inches in my front yard and it's all beach sand, shells and, and sand. And that's the way pretty much the entire area is. Where you have roads, of course, they, they do try to pour some concrete over it before the asphalt, but obviously that doesn't hold the roadway up if the base of sand collapses. Now you can't see down in underneath because they've got the barriers up, but the news crew did fly overhead with the helicopter and you could see how deep it is. It's about 20 feet wide and 30 feet deep right now. They think it's done expanding, but sometimes there's kind of like little aftershocks and they will further expand and you'll see ripples. And that could easily open up to the size that you see the barricades. That's not uncommon. Sometimes they'll expand and take a whole yard or a whole house. Obviously nothing can really protect against this. I was talking with a guy that was right here who lives just three doors down and obviously he's he's pretty distraught right now and all the neighbors are coming out to check it out. The news crews are just rolling in and it'll probably have some spectators all day. You can get a good look here at, and this happens in seconds. This literally the the void is there and you don't know it and then by the time the top layers give way it just completely falls. The, the roadway and everything that's been suspended literally drops two three stories straight down. So that's why it's it's so deadly of a phenomenon vehicles can just fall right in you know the roads there one second and the next it's not and the car goes vertical same thing with buildings you know it, you don't have any warning that's why people are killed so there you go here's your second hand look at least at a big old sinkhole I've seen a couple of them now this is the biggest one out in the open like that that's been right around me. There have been several that have taken buildings, but this was a, a nice clear look because it was just in the middle of the street. I was talking to a guy there for a bit who lives three doors down from it. And, uh, you know, he's obviously really worried and pissed. He's only been here four years and the subdivision's only eight years old. So he's really concerned that you know, they didn't do a proper site survey and the base for the neighborhood may not be stable. But like I said, you really can't predict these things because the voids aren't there until they're not. You know what I mean? It's not like you can tell that, hey, there's a, an opening here or there's going to be an opening here. For now, at least, they just take what they're going to take. The news crew wanted to interview me on the way out, but I said, I live a couple miles away. So I pointed him to the guy I was talking to, obviously a much better interview subject, somebody that lives right there. I'm like, oh, okay, cool, thanks. So they were hitting him up right when I was leaving. Yeah, it's just coincidence that I happened to see that this morning. And you know what I figured? Give you guys a little insight into my area. <laughs> This is coincidentally right behind my wife's school too. The neighborhood, they're, they're trapped in there right now because that road is the only access road to the whole rest of the back half of that neighborhood. Fortunately, and kind of oddly, they built in an emergency access road that goes right across from my wife's school. And it's basically just like a golf cart path. And it's only made for pedestrians and emergency vehicles. So it's basically a jogging path but that's not any kind of common thing around here. I think they only did it because one of the cul-de-sacs just happened to be really close to the street that my wife's school is on. If I had gone straight across where the sinkhole was, it would have dead-ended and then directly behind that house would have been my wife's school. So, I mean, that goes to show you how close certain critical buildings are also. And if that had have opened up during the day, in a school, 
I think things would have been a lot different. I mean, obviously nobody wants that to happen, and it's fortunate that the the schools and the other non-fatal openings happened when they did, but still. Really, what does it take for something to be done, and at the very least for this unlimited agricultural dumping and pumping to be stopped? The public has no control over it. It's all politics and bullshit. And of course the politicians are lobbied and paid off and funded and the agriculture is a huge source for that in Florida. We don't have that much natural industry. Now that the fertilizer and the mining industry is, is gone, that's been gone a long time, uh, you really only have farming out of Florida. You know, it's mostly a tourism state and to small degree cigars and education and things like that, but pretty much citrus and strawberries, eh, that's what Florida's known for. And low taxes, that's what attracts the snowbirds and the old farts, because you don't have income tax. What is going on? Is this dude turning? He's just freaking riding the shoulder. Oh yeah, he is turning. That's wonderful notice. Driving through the bike lane that whole time. Jackass. That's a driver who's full of shit. Get it? Sewer truck? Septic truck? See what I did there? Anyway, that's it for today, guys. I'm going to head back home. It's getting really hot out. It's already 91 degrees. Oh, I'm also trying another new setting with the camera today. I have decided to go with the wide instead of the ultra wide. Most people said that they agreed with my initial thought that it does look better overall. So thank you guys for the feedback, but I'm also trying to record in a different setting. I'm in 60 frames a second instead of 30. Now you might ask yourself, well, why does that matter? Because I'm rendering, I'm uploading to YouTube at 30 frames a second, which is the most it can take at 1080. And even when YouTube will officially support 60 frames a second, I won't be uploading 1080 in it because there isn't enough internet bandwidth to handle that. But I'm doing 60 simply for the added frame rate. Thank you, brother. Yes, that's a regular occurrence, especially at this intersection. A lot of, I'll call them homeless, but some of them are just professionals. I have no idea what he is, but he's nice at least. Sometimes they get real aggressive, come up knocking on your windows, begging for money. But he was nice. Gave me a little writer's prayer there. Can't hurt, I guess. So anyway, I'm recording at 60 frames a second to try to smooth out the motion because there's so much fast motion in the frame here. I just want to see if it'll help. I did the first couple videos in 60, but I really, because I was messing with all the rendering settings and still getting everything right, it's not a real good test. But that's been dialed in a while, so now I'm just going to check this out and see if it looks any better. I think it will a little bit, for fast moving objects at least, like maybe the lines on the road, things going by in the sides of the frame, but we'll see. Anyway, thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe, give me a thumbs up, and we'll see you next time.